Good afternoon to you. Mark Sutter, HurricaneTrack.com, here with your hurricane outlook and discussion. Welcome to Monday, July 13th, 2020. We've got a pretty full plate today. Remember, Monday is when I usually go over a more in-depth look at what's happening in the tropics beyond what's going on in the headlines. So let's get right to it, shall we? We will start today off with a look at the anomalies map just to kind of remind you of where we are. And the Atlantic Basin, of course, still quite a bit warmer than the long-term average. We know that. We see this cold, neutral uh, signal in the tropical Pacific. That hasn't changed much. Uh, this has fluctuated out here in the Nino 3.4 region. Sometimes it's been negative, and then it went up towards positive. But all in all, this large swath of Pacific out here has cooled off over the last few months. And that's not going to change and reverse anytime soon. A few areas of concern, maybe a little bit more concern, the high anomalous values around Florida here. We've gone over that. We'll look at actual sea surface, sea surface temperatures in a moment. Uh, but very high relative to average all through here. And this all surrounds the islands. You know, we're talking about at least one degree Celsius higher than the long-term average and pretty warm out in the thick of the main development region as well. And very warm, the anomalies are up here in the northwest Atlantic uh, off the east coast. This is only the mid, early to mid part of July. Water temperatures will continue to go up from here. And so then we just need to see how much above or below normal or average are those sea surface temperatures. And so far, nothing has really changed we're holding on to that pattern, and I'll show you what I think that's going to mean uh, at the end of today's update. Looking at actual sea surface temperatures in the Gulf of Mexico, 30 degrees Celsius and higher all around and on the inside of this line that I've drawn. There's 31 Celsius all down through here. And then there's even a few pockets of 30 C showing up in and around the central Gulf up close towards the coastal areas here. These are all your 30 Celsius areas, Lake Pontchartrain, uh, probably getting close to 31 Celsius. Areas just off the Mississippi Sound, very, very warm. So the Gulf, extremely warm, as it always is. And if we go back and look at the anomalies, though, you know, for the most part, except for this one little area right up here near Cape San Blas in that region, Apalachicola, around 85 degrees longitude, that the rest of the Gulf is pretty much running slightly warmer than the long-term average. And it's neat because you can see the water temperatures here a little bit cooler. Why is that the case? I don't know. I have to look into it. There must be some kind of an offshore component to the wind that's pushing the water away from land. That would be my guess. But it's hard to say. That's an interesting um, anomaly there that we can see in the anomalies graphic and then of course in the actual sea surface temperatures um, you know it's it's not like purple means cold you know if we look at the legend we're talking 27 28 degrees Celsius which is still 81 to 82 degrees Fahrenheit that's not bad looking off the east coast here the mid-atlantic water temperatures have rebounded uh, quite a lot from uh, the early part of the summer when it was more rainy and kind of troughy. All this orange color through here, uh, 28 Celsius. And right up against some of the shelf water, 29 Celsius starting to show up off of Garden City, Myrtle Beach, that area. And the Gulf Stream runs through there. So uh, offshore, 29 Celsius. And again, it's still only early July. We've got a long way to go. And these water temperatures are going to keep on warming. And it'll be interesting to see how far north that 26 degree isotherm, which is Celsius, and that 26 isotherm is right there. I'm trying to outline it for you. It goes on up here to the southern part of Delaware. Um, I'm sorry, Delaware is further north. The southern part of the Delmarva Peninsula, anyway. The Maryland uh, area, the Maryland shore. Uh, but in Delaware Bay, yes, water temperatures are warm. That's a shallower body of water. Um, it'll just be interesting to see. We always sort of do the Russian roulette each year with hurricanes. Will we get one that comes up the East Coast into these big metropolitan areas, uh, kind of like Fay, but stronger? Yeah, we don't want to see that happen. That would be terrible, especially considering everything else we're having to deal with this year.
but water temperatures would play a key role. So there's your 80 degree line or 26 Celsius, and it's only July. We'll see how far north that gets. We'll revisit this every couple of weeks or so and see how that is progressing. All right, a lot of talk out there about where are these hurricanes that we've heard about, all right? And we go through this every year, you know, when it's, when it's predicted to be a busy year or whatever. Um, it, you get to mid-July, and there's plenty of Saharan air, and that's what all of this is through here. You can see it very clearly. Uh, I'll, I'll outline it for you in case you can't. Yes, that's the Saharan air layer, very prevalent. It's dry, mid-level dusty air, it caps the atmosphere, it doesn't allow for deep convection, and it happens every year since I've been doing this, especially uh, seeing that we can watch this on satellite imagery, I don't know, every hour or every three hours, whatever this updates. You know, talk about watching a pot. The watch pot never boils, right? I mean, nobody wants devastation from a hurricane, but hurricanes are interesting to track. We've heard, oh, there's supposed to be a lot of hurricanes this year. Well, people are starting to wonder where they are. Well, it's July, and we usually don't have hurricane activity pick up, you know this, until later in August. And I'll show you some more uh, on climatology in a moment. So considering all this dry, dusty air, what is this right here? Well, that's interesting, isn't it? Is that an anomaly? Is there some data missing? Is that a problem in the satellite? No, it's not. Let's look at the total precipitable water, the TPW. Ah, look at that. There you go. So these orange colors are lots of moisture, lots of humidity, and that, ladies and gentlemen, is a high amplitude tropical wave. I mean, come on. That's amazing. Look at all that moisture. It's pulling it up out of the intertropical convergent zone. Here's another tropical wave that it got a little bit energized as it passed through the islands. A couple of our Patreon supporters uh, who have webcams down there for us in the Virgin Islands, Brent and Tim, uh, Timothy down there, uh, they were remarking on our chat about that. So, you know, we all are interested in hurricanes, and, you know, again, nobody wants anything that we can't handle. You know, they're kind of interesting to see in person, no doubt, but they cause a lot of problems, and so... Let's hold them off as long as we can, because I'm telling you, I think it's coming. There's nothing that leads me to think that anything's going to change. And when I see this, a huge area of increase of precipitable water, wow. And there's a lot of dry air in between, no doubt. But ladies and gentlemen, it is July 13th. Duh, that's what you expect. And thank goodness we have this now. Because August, especially late August through September and October, are more than likely going to be more than we can handle. If we look at it from a satellite perspective, a few interesting features. Look at that little swirly way up in the North Atlantic. Kind of neat to see. little mesoscale convective complex right there over Oklahoma. Sometimes these come off and make their way into the Gulf and try to do something. I'm not seeing this doing that. But Barry, which made landfall a year ago, already been a year, uh, came from a system over the lower 48. Down in the intertropical convergent zone, it is squashed, yes, because of the very prevalent Saharan air layer that's down here. Again, it's July 13th. What else do you expect? But you can see how the ITCZ, the intertropical convergent zone, getting pulled up, kind of tilted over here, and pulled into that tropical wave, the energy rolling off of Africa, and with the standing wave, as it's called, the upward motion focusing over Africa and parts of the Indian Ocean, rising motion is going to lead to more and more robust tropical waves. And once this subsidence and dry, warm air through here abates and that goes away, all it has to do is relent just a little bit and the lid will come off and we're going to be tracking storms constantly. And you're going to see me uh, two and three times a day, probably. That's coming. All right. Real quick look at the modeling here. I want you to focus. This is very important. I'm actually going to go out to about day 10 because there's a couple of things I want you to watch for to see if they happen. I'll watch for those with you, of course. 
Um, I'm going to just tell you, there's nothing in the near term. All right, but I want you to keep your eyes on this area right off the coast of Africa, especially as we get out to about a week or so. All right, so let's just kind of uh, mouse through this, if you will, you know, one frame at a time, um, 24 hours out. And by the way, this is the 850 millibar level. We're looking at vorticity. We're seeing if any of those orange and yellow areas come together and bundle up that energy. All right, there is 96 hours, and there's a little... A uh, little tropical wave right there. You can see it has that little arms to it almost. Nice little feature coming off. All right. So, again, watch that area right off the coast of Africa here as we go through time. I'll try to be quicker with this so you can get an idea of what to expect. So that was uh, it's going out to 120. Not much out there. All right. 144. Now, do you see it? I see it. It's coming into view. Now we go out to 168. There it comes. Ah, interesting. Let's back it up. Look at that little piece of energy there. This is out. The dings you hear are people sending 5 million text messages to my phone and my iPad. Sorry about that. Um, or my toast is ready. Um, so that's the area that I want you to watch right there. This is at about 138 hours out. That's only about six days. That rolls through Western Africa off of Dakar and through the Cape Verde Islands at about day nine or so. And then it gets out there under the uh, influence of the Saharan air layer, probably. And then we're getting on out past 10 days. But that's going to be interesting to see. This puts us out about the 20th, 21st of July or so. I mean, that looks pretty formidable right there. An interesting wave and closed iso or height lines in there, not quite isobars. Uh, around the Cape Verde Islands or Cabo Verde Islands. All right, so that'll be interesting to watch. Nothing else in the pipeline, though. Trade's not too strong overall, and so the water temperatures are going to stay warm. We're not seeing the screaming 30-knot trade winds just blasting through here and strong upper-level shear going the other way. It's just a matter of time, and things are going to really start to perk up. Don't believe me? Look at climatology as a guide, history as a guide. This goes up to 2015. Eventually, this will get updated. But this is what it looks like this time of year, the time period that we are in, July 11th through the 20th. What happens when we fast forward that one month? Bam! That's just climatology. You know what I mean? The background state getting more favorable in just the next 30 days that's what happens. Much more activity in the Atlantic Basin, especially out here in the so-called main development region where you can get these long track hurricanes. And you'll see, I'm extremely confident in adding to the confidence of myself and others. We look at this tweet here from Ben Knoll, a trusted individual down there from New Zealand. Uh, the new UK Met, that's the United Kingdom Met Office, seasonal guidance has trended wetter in the deep tropical Atlantic for August through October. Why? What does wetter matter? And what does he mean? Well, let's look all through this region right through here. A wetter signal overall in the Atlantic Basin. The modeling picking up on that. More tropical activity. The UK Met here, a very good model overall. It's sub-seasonal and seasonal guidance tends to do really well when you go back and look hindsight, right? You go back and see how did it do. It tends to do pretty well. And you can see, too, that's the June update. Let's see if I can stop it on July. I don't know if it's going to let me. There's June. There's July. It doesn't let me stop it. These GIF animations, I tell you, that's all right. But even look down here in the Caribbean, all this blue that shows up in the August through September time frame, this is the July update. It goes from green to blue, and the blue is more precip anomalies here. These are anomalous. These ensemble mean anomaly, the above normal. That's quite a bit above normal. It's really showing us the modeling, the ensemble product is showing us uh, probably what's coming. And so I don't want you to be scared. I want you to be prepared. And I know that sounds like, Oh, Mark and his slogans. Listen, it's true. If we're prepared and we're armed with knowledge 
and foresight, then we don't have to be as scared. Hurricanes are going to still be nasty, and they can still do a lot of nasty things, but you don't have to be scared of this information. You can see what's coming, put your mind to it, and say, you know what, I'm going to do a little bit more to get ready this year, whatever that means for you. It's different for me. It's different for people that live alone versus people with large families versus people that have businesses. Maybe they have a special needs person that has to have more attention. This is the time to get that plan into motion. And when we see the guidance like what we're looking at showing us out into time what could be coming, it's not a guarantee. There could be a lot of hurricanes and absolutely none of them hit land. That's possible. But instead of hoping and remember, hope by itself is not a planning tool. Instead of hoping it all away, that doesn't work very well. We've seen that. It's okay. We're not even going to go. You can't just hope something away. It doesn't work that way. You have to be ready. And we have an amazing uh, product called Science and Meteorology Numerical Weather Prediction. It's not perfect. It's far from it. But boy, when these signs are this strong, we should pay attention. And that's what I'm here to help you do. All right, so don't forget I'm on Twitter at Hurricane Track. Subscribe to the channel on YouTube, Hurricane Track as the brand there. And look for the logo. It's just like the one I wear on my shirt, the Hurricane Track logo. Uh, just crossed 23,000 subscribers. Thank you all very much for that support. It's really grown most of that, believe it or not, since 2017. I've been on YouTube since 2006. It's true, but I hardly ever did anything with it really until 2017. Why did it take that long? I don't know. I guess I didn't realize what I had. And most of that explosive growth, and that really is, it's all organic. I haven't done any advertising, no paid promotions, none of that. It's just been you guys trusting in what I say. So feel free, please spread the word. Let people know what we're doing here. I've got a great group of people behind me. It's not just me. We have our crowdfunding group at Patreon. Uh, if you want to learn more about that, there's always a link in the description, and you can get behind us from a funding perspective if you're in the position to do so, and it makes all of this possible. So thank you for everything from everybody. We're growing. It's great. All right, that is it for me for today. As always, as, you know, I really appreciate you tuning in. It's great to have you. I am Mark Suddeth for HurricaneTrack.com. I'll be back with more for you tomorrow afternoon.